This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my new channel, Game Night. Dedicated to gaming, live streaming, let's plays, highlight reels, medieval and sword related news, tabletop role playing, and also having a lot of fun. So please do go check it out, and while you're there, why not subscribe? Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this episode of Pop Culture Weapons Analyzed, we'll be looking at the Beskar Spear, as seen on The Mandalorian, that appears on Disney+. Plus. And so, the Beskar Spear, interesting, yeah, I, there's, you know, a couple of things that I want to talk about, but honestly there's not much, because it's a very basic kind of spear, yet there are some odd things about it, and that's what I want to talk about. So, first of all, uh, in The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian, gets a spear that is made out of a special material called Beskar, which is also what his armor is made out of. And apparently, pure Beskar is one of the only materials in the live-action Star Wars properties that a lightsaber cannot cut through. Now, there might be some other examples of certain types of you know materials that a lightsaber can't cut through, but in terms of what is actually being established in the live-action properties, pure Beskar is the only thing. And they do go out of the way to say, pure Beskar, okay, which implies, and I think is confirmed in other elements in Star Wars, that um, diluted Beskar is nowhere near as strong. So, okay, interesting property. It can be used against lightsabers, and in fact, we do get to see it oppose certain lightsabers. I'll try and avoid spoilers, but there might be one or two here and there, so if you're wanting to watch uh, Mandalorian, maybe need to wait until uh, you watch, it to see, watch this video, but uh, the, the, I won't, I'll be avoiding major spoilers, just about the spear, essentially, here. So, okay, it is essentially indestructible. That's interesting, that's cool, it can oppose lightsabers. Um, I'm going to address that a bit more later on, uh, but first I want to talk about its design. It's a very subtle, understated design. You might be thinking, well, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> okay, so, first of all, for a spear, it is particularly short. Now, it's not to say short spears uh, weren't around, all right, but spears do get far more utility when they're above head height, at least, by maybe a uh, foot to half a foot. But the best car spear is about mm, only up to head height, really, which is certainly on the shorter end, but when you say that, there was, of course, many examples of shorter spears and polearm-like weapons as well. So that's not a negative thing, it's just could have been a little bit better if it was a bit longer. Uh, the next thing, it's particularly thin. That's not a bad thing either, and I would assume this is, would reduce the weight, because this is an area where we go into where it's undefined, which is a little annoying, because Beskar, um, in the wikis and, and lore and stuff, is supposed to weigh or be really, really heavy. Uh, but yet when we see it actually being used in the show, it doesn't look uniquely heavy. Now, it's particularly thin, so that would help its weight and would explain why it needs to be so thin, and if it's uh, near indestructible, that uh, answers that then as well. It doesn't need to be thicker, because in real spears, uh, the shafts tend to be a bit thicker, so uh, they can't get chopped through, because it's funny, in terms of real spears, people assume, well, you can just chop them in half, single strike with a sword. No. <laughs> okay. People say that, and they do not have much experience with what real weapons are like. Um, because usually spears are made out of hardwood, at least. This isn't like balsa wood or pine or something like that. Because you don't want them to break. You want them to be sturdy, rigid, and strong. And uh, it will take many strikes for a sword to chop through. It'll probably even take many strikes for an axe to chop through, because it's not being braced against everything. If someone strikes it, it's usually being held in someone in combat. If someone strikes it, it'll be being held in a person's hand, and if someone hits it, you, there's give, okay? Uh, which means all the power of the strike doesn't get sunk into the weapon. Uh, but still, to make them even more robust, they're made thick, as I mentioned, because if they were, if this spear was as thin as the Beskar spear, well, then you might actually be able to get through it with one solid, like a really solid strike from a sword, and even more so with an axe. So there's real spears, thicker, Beskar spear, thinner, but makes sense because Beskar should be heavier. We don't know how heavy, it's a bit undefined, which means they don't have to obey those rules as to its weight. And it's also near indestructible, so it can be thinner as well. So that's all interesting and good. And that wouldn't affect its utility, its function, and stuff. But let's look at the spearhead, because this is, this is the most interesting part about the Beskar spear. And uh, it is, it's got a very, very small spearhead. What does that mean? Okay. 
in terms of thrusting capacity, not much, okay? In actual fact, it's interesting that this one even has some side blades on it. They're useful, okay, because if this didn't have any edges on the sides and was just a rounded tip, well, that would affect how it penetrates through material. You see, a spear that has a kind of side edges, uh, that won't be focusing very well, but a spear that has side edges, okay, when it thrusts into something, okay, like this, these side edges actually cut, okay, as it's getting pushed in to make room for the circumference of the shaft coming behind. But, oh, look at this. This spear has something. It has these side wings on it. In actual fact, uh, there are spears with much more pronounced side things on it, or wings. This is a, a LARP one, but it has larger wings, so it's good for th representation. Oh, interesting. Some spears have wings on them. Not all spears, granted. And indeed, the Beskar spear doesn't. But this is uh, something that is absent from its design. Could this have been beneficial, having side wings on the spear? Well, yes, it can be. And uh, it depends on really what the spear is being used for and other things like that. But the reason why wings are useful is that in terms of a spear's utility, once you get so deep uh, in terms of a, an attack, uh, that reaches lethal levels. But then any additional penetration past the lethal point doesn't do a thing. And so imagine if you, like, uh, you don't need much depth to actually get a spear through someone's body, okay? Our bodies, well, about, oh, depending on <laughs> depending on the midsection, right? Uh, aren't all that thin. And so once you thrust someone to the point where a spear can go through them, any additional over-penetration does nothing and in fact causes more detrimental results in getting your spear stuck in the target because it's harder to release now. And so that's what the purpose of these wings are for. The wings are there to stop a thrust from over-penetrating and then it makes it easier to withdraw the spear and use it again in combat in follow-up strikes. And so, honestly, if I'll suggest anything to improve the design of the best car spear, would have been some side side wings on it. Because the Beskar Spear is a, is very much uh, a dedicated thrusting weapon, because even though it has small little, you know, um, blades on the edges of, uh, of the points, they're not they're, those aren't there for cutting, okay? A spear has kind of blades or edges on the sides of, it, of its point to assist in its penetrative ability, because as it's pushing through, it needs to push apart material, right? to make room for, the, for it to penetrate deep enough. And so by having edges, these actually cut as the spear is pushing in to open up the wound more so the spear can penetrate deeper. If there wasn't there, you only have pressure and force pushing that little hole apart wider and wider to get the spear in. So it's useful having blades on the edges of the spears, hence why we've added them on for a very long time. But what they are not there for, it, oh, context, okay, when, it, when the edges of a spear is this short, they are not there for cutting. Because it is really hard to aim that strike on your opponent, like especially at full length, and then it's not really made for it either, and so the edge angle alignment, the, e, the effectiveness of the cut is going to be very, very poor. But that's not to say there weren't spears that were made for cutting, which are generally called hewing spears. Here is a spearhead. I haven't attached it to a spear thing. And as you can see here, the blade edges are much longer than, well, what we see on the Beskar spear or my example right here. And so with this one, okay, you could actually perform a half-decent cut with it much easier than one that was shorter. Makes sense. And so hewing spears absolutely existed historically, and there are many examples of different types. Ones that even get so long in the spear point that they're not really spears anymore. It's like having a sword attached on the end of a staff. And funnily enough, there is an actual weapon called the sword staff, which is exactly that. I have a video on it. Check it out if you're interested. So these are the varying things. But because the Beskar spears, you know, edges are so short, that means very much this is a dedicated thrusting weapon and it would have benefited from wings. But that means one of the ways that would be far less effective, okay, in using this as a weapon would be 
striking with it with either the intent to cut or as kind of like a quarterstaff. And this is the interesting thing. When we look at some of the fight scenes in Mandalorian, and I want to do a much deeper breakdown, into, indeed so deep you might call it an autopsy, right? Um, on some of the fight scenes in Mandalorian. Because the ways in which the Beskar spear is fought with in the Mandalorian really shows that the people using him have no idea how to actually fight with a spear. <laughs> they're swinging around either like a quarterstaff sometimes or, or something else, but they're not using it like it should be as a dedicated thrusting weapon because... Are you... <laughs> One of the big weaknesses of a spear is there's nothing protecting your hands, and so if you cross a spear with another weapon, guess what's going to happen? They could just slide the weapon down, and my goodness, that is like... I'll be, I'll be pointing that out in my deeper review, because... Mm, okay, but ending my review off there, yeah, the Beskar spear has some interesting points uh, of consideration. You know, like, it's no real major criticism, because look, there were smaller spears without wings. I just think wings would add with the effectiveness. And people don't fight with the Beskar Spear the way that it's made to be fought with. Again, different video, deeper review on that. But overall, interesting, very cool, and look, I actually kind of like it. It is an understated, very simplistic design which makes sense for the material it's made out of. And it has a lot of historical authenticity, which could have been just a little bit better. But it's a great kind of point of reference to have a discussion on just talking about spears in general. So, there, there, there you go, those are my you know, thoughts on the best car spear. What are your thoughts? Do you have any any comments that you'd like to share? So, oh, the other thing I'd probably mention is that the interesting about the best car spear, the side blades, the edges on it, aren't that big either, okay? Uh, they're very short in profile, and you can see the roundness, the actual, you know, shaft of the spear kind of going in line with the uh, blade points. Uh, down, which would make it even more like inefficient as a cutting weapon. Which again, to, like to emphasise the point that it should be very much a dedicated thrusting weapon, uh, and unfortunately, it's not used like that when we see it used. So yeah. But like I said, love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video on Shadowversity. So until then, farewell.